Hey everybody, welcome to Monday Night Live in Lexington, you guys. My name is Katherine Kaufman and I'm a psychic medium here in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome to my every Monday night show. This is where we look and discover what and who we are in this journey called life. Big shout out to my Monday night crew over here on Instagram. Um, Brenda, good to see you. Enjoy my Monday night buddy, KYGS Rider and pob437 good to see you guys let me give you a little wave here uh good to see all you guys joining over here on facebook and uh i wanted to give you the latest update on where the show is streaming on monday night so we have two pages of facebook going my personal page which most of you like to watch on because it's you know laid back relaxed and then the professional page, Catherine Kaufman Psychic Medium. Uh, so if you haven't done a like on my professional page, I would appreciate it if you'd hop over there and give that page a like. It always helps with the algorithm and uh, sharing posts and stuff. But other places you can watch the show if you if you don't want to get on Facebook and you can't catch it here is it's streaming live on my website and then i will put a link in the comments to the website in case you want to watch it there but you can also <clears throat> watch the show live on youtube uh, live on instagram live on periscope live on linkedin live on twitch and live on d live so if any of you guys are watching on d live or youtube or periscope or linkedin or twitch go ahead and hit follow on the profile because uh, I will be here every Monday night at seven with something either paranormal or self-help. Um, also, if you are following on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notifications and the thumbs up. And that always helps the show and helps with the algorithms too. Let's do some quick shout outs over here on Facebook. Hey to Paige Denise. Big shout out to Melissa Bigley and her little sidekick, Miss Cleo. Big kisses to you guys. Patty Ann Kreider, Ina Thompson, Sandra Lee Small, Angel Lee, Taya Moore, uh, Melissa Wilson, and Dana Fleener. Good to see you guys. Now for, um, let's see, Patty Ann. Uh, you need to hit follow on my page and see first and you won't miss anything. But don't forget, anytime you want to watch the show, just show up here Monday nights at 7 and you can watch the show. And if you want to watch the old shows, um, just go over to the YouTube channel. That's where all of the old shows are banked. And so you can watch anything from past shows there. And I'm going to put a quick link in the comments so that you can go to the YouTube channel and watch the old shows. And then this is the website if you want to watch live there on Monday nights. Go and do that. Uh, hey, shout out to Vegas and Jackie Brown and Chantal. Good to see you. Nice to see you here. So good to hear from you. Uh, and Angela Shields. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks for being my Monday night buddies. So we want to know tonight, tonight's going to be kind of a, a laid back quick show um, because there's a lot of, I noticed a lot of misconception in, in some of my mediumship readings with people who are getting signs or messages from beyond and the confusion that's going with that. So this show is really to kind of clarify and clear that up. So one of the purposes of the show is if I find situations that come up during my readings for the week or the month uh, and people are having the same kind of problem or the same type of problem, what I'll do is I'll do a show on it. And that way uh, I won't have to waste time during the 60 minute session for the reading explaining all this stuff. I can do the reading and spend plenty of time on other questions and have them watch this show afterwards. And so it really saves the clients a lot of time uh, on things that need to be explained, but we just don't have time in a 60 minute session to do that. Uh, again, if any of you guys have questions about maybe a sign or a symbol you 
receive from the beyond and you want to clarify it, go ahead and ask that in the comments and I'll try my best to watch the feed and stop it for those questions. So we want to know tonight, when are signs from the beyond real and when are they just good reception or when are they not real? What most often people get mixed up on. Uh, so let's go over some of the samples of signs from the beyond. And of course, there are a ton more than just the ones that I'm going to mention. But the ones that I'm going to mention are pretty much the most common ones. Uh, people that find pennies, dimes, and remember the old saying, pennies from heaven. So, um, <clears throat> and as kids, most often our dads gave us uh, the change that was out of their pocket, or my dad did. And I know a lot of other dads did that too. Uh, and so he would just give out the change that was left in the pocket, his pocket from the day. And so our generation in particular kind of recognizes coins and money as a sign from our parents who've passed on. Now, that's most often a real sign, especially if you're just walking outside and you happen to see some pennies or dimes and also pennies or dimes that show up in your house in odd locations where you know you haven't left change there or there's nobody else there that could leave change. It's sort of like they, they um, a port out of nowhere. Um, those are definite, definite signs and rarely do I find that change pennies or dimes are misconstrued as a love sign from somebody who's passed on? Um, so we don't misconstrue normally change pennies or dimes. Let me check for a question. <laughs> hey to Peggy Thompson. Good to see you here tonight. Um, okay. Other things that are signs from the beyond. Small animals acting odd, in odd ways to get your attention. Okay, this can be misconstrued sometimes because uh, if, and I would say you need to look closely at the animal or insect to see if there's something maybe attacking it. I remember there was one time, and I thought it was a sign, but it was really just a, um, <laughs> it was just a bee trying to sting the little dog. It was acting really strangely and moving really strangely and it caught my attention. And at first I thought it was a sign, but then <laughs> as I looked closer, it was really a bee that was trying to sting the poor little thing. So um, kind of look a little bit closer at either insects or small animals. Now, when they're acting oddly, uh, what's happening is the spirit is actually influencing the electromagnetic field of the small animal or the insect to make it act in a way that attracts your attention. And that would be like the insect that flies over and lights on your shoulder or maybe your hand or maybe, you know, directly in front of you or the bird that flies right up to your window. If you can see it and it's that close, that the chances of that sign not being real is very low. That's usually a sign that is real or authentic. So Deanna wants to know is let's put that up there. Is it just pennies and dimes or any other coin? Um, it can be another coin, especially if the coin has significance to you <coughs> or the person who's passed on. That's what cough medicine is for. <laughs> mm. Okay, because allergies have started. I'm going to apologize now. Allergies have started. I hollered for David to come down and get me a allergy pill, <clears throat> but I'm going to be coughing and kind of tonight. But most often it's pennies or dimes. Um, but a lot of times, remember our dads used to give us those 50 cent pieces too. But, you know, the likelihood of you seeing one of those or the person who's passed on being able to manipulate the environment to attain one of those to make it a sign is very slim. 
and usually pennies and dimes are a lot more easy for them to um, send to you. So, you know, sometimes it's a matter of, um, you know, them being able to get to the object and manipulate it. So Angel Lee says, seen a penny today in three doves. Oh, now see, that's a sign. Because you have two things in one day. Uh, and Angela says $2 bills. Yes. Angela, did your dad or your mom give you the $2 bills when you were a kid? Was that something specific to you guys that has, you know, like a sentimental attachment? And <clears throat> let's see. Rob says, a moment when you're doing readings and spirit defines by the sound of a crow. Yes, <laughs> that's happened to me before. Um, another thing that was a really cool sign, I'll never forget this. And uh, I was doing a reading. It was in the summer and I had the window open. And the gentleman in front of me, we had just concluded the reading and he was asking me, he said, well, do you think anything will happen? Do you think this is all real? And as soon as he got that out of his uh, mouth, there was a crash of thunder and a gust of wind that blew through the window and blew everything down off the shelf around him. And we were, we were both like, okay. <laughs> uh, so yes, Rob, when that kind of stuff happens, it's so obvious that that is a sign. Uh, so <laughs> Ina says, so a butterfly sitting on my husband's bare toe for about five minutes would probably be a sign. Yes. Yes. It's probably a sign of who you will have to look at Ina. Like, is there anybody he's been thinking about lately or, you know, maybe missing lately? Is it anybody's birthday or some kind of special day for somebody who's passed on? You know, any kind of association like that, Ina, that you can let us know about. <clears throat> and uh, that's probably who it is. Big hola to Michael Lawrence, my son. How are you doing tonight? Good to see you here. Um, <laughs> glad to see everybody here indeed. So let's get on to the next one. Um, and the next one is certain songs being played, like on the radio, that have significance to the person. one. This could be misconstrued uh, sometimes, especially if, you know, the person playing the music on um, the radio station really likes that song and they pay, play it frequently. So that one can or may not be a sign. But I will tell you this. It's like it has to be in congruence with some other sign, uh, kind of like. Um, if you were to be missing somebody who's in the afterlife and today is their birthday and then the song comes on, then you can go, okay, that's a sign. But like if you hear it pretty frequently, I would say probably not maybe so much a sign. And it's always more significant if it's on the day that you need it to be on. <laughs> that that is kind of paramount okay let me check for questions and we are good over here on instagram um okay moving right along aroma of smoke like if if somebody's passed on who was a smoker maybe they smoke cigarettes maybe they smoke cigars my dad smoked cigars so sometimes i will uh, smell cigar smoke around me or somebody's perfume or fragrance. These are not usually misconstrued, you know, um, not usually they can be, but not usually um, because like, say if you're alone in the house and there's nobody around uh, and the doors and windows are closed and you smell fragrances or smoke, uh, specifically cigarette or cigar smoke and there's no one in the house with you, the chances of that, um, that's probably an accurate sign for sure. Um, so Angel says, okay, let's look at this one. Doorbell ringing and there's no one there on a family member's birthday and that family member has passed on. That's absolutely a sign. And also, a lot of people, and this was on my list too, 
um, we'll get messages on text or like a phone call from an old number on there. And, and it's somebody who's passed on and the number should be defunct, but it still comes up. And when you answer it, there's, it's just static. That's definitely, definitely, definitely a sign. I've had old text messages from people who've passed on that come through on my phone like years later, especially when I'm thinking about them. So that's, you know, and it's usually when it's conjunction with something else that points to them, you can say, okay, that is a, an actual sign. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Rob says, my mom and I, we're sitting in the living room talking about what song my aunt requested tomorrow at her funeral. And here you are talking about <laughs> music from spirit as a sign. That is so cool. That is so cool. I love it. I love it when things come together like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see what Patty says. Patty O'Brien, last week I was missing my dad bad, whose name is Leo. Three times on the same day, the name Leo came up. <laughs> Now, see, you have to have two things together like that, like thinking about them, really missing them that day, and then these things pop up. Those are definite signs. A friend of a friend's new baby in a restaurant ad and a store ad to me, I thought he was just trying to say, I'm with you. Well, that's exactly, you are exactly right. He was just trying to say, I'm good, I'm okay, and I'm with you. So, Eloise, good to see you. Hey, when lights blow out. Yes, we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> when lights blow out or lights are flickering on and off. Now, because spirits are, are ourselves, we are electromagnetic beings. All we have to do is to plug our own energy into a light source to manipulate the electrical flow. So, Spirits often use lights flickering on and off or, like Eloise said, blowing the lights out as a sign of communication. Now, not all the time, because what if it is a short in the circuitry? So it's definitely something that you need to check out and rule out um, that, it, you know, it's a sign or it's you know, a disruption in the electrical circuit or that circuitry needs looked into. Um, so that can be a sign that's misinterpreted. Yeah. So Patty Ann says, if you open and ask, you will get signs. I ask and receive them all the time. Yes. So <clears throat> if you're, you know, if you're really missing somebody or if it's their anniversary or their birthday or you ask for a direct sign. So I feel like when it's a stronger indication of a sign, if there's something that accompanies that sign, like you missing them, it's a special occasion, or you've asked for that particular sign. All right, let's look and see what other questions we have. No more right the minute. I think I covered everybody. I hope so. <laughs> that sometimes the feed zips by me. I know it, it doesn't on here for you, but um, it zips by over on my panel kind of fast. So I'm trying to keep up with it. Hey, Joshua, good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing okay. And he says, after my mom died back in 2009, I saw her initials on a license plate of a car. I was behind and her name was Rowena. It's a very uncommon name. Absolutely right. I saw on a box in a store that my sister and I were in made me feel like she knew we were together. Oh, yes. You know, that is absolutely true. Um, and what they will do is they can manipulate the brain waves uh, of yourself and your sister in order for you to look like to influence you to look at certain things so that you catch that. It's sort of like, you know, pay attention here or look over there. And so you're looking at things and paying attention to things that you wouldn't normally, but it's because of the electromagnetic influence again, that they elicit on 
us. Um, okay, let's see. So, um, again, aroma, we went over that, text messages, series of numbers that have a meaning. Um, <clears throat> and again, it's, it's the spirits that are influencing your mind to look at certain groups of numbers. And the reason why they use numbers is that numbers are like a universe's language. Um, anywhere you go on the planet, numbers are pretty much the same everywhere that you go. And so to use them as a mode of communication is uh, kind of a constant for them. Now, here's another thing in doing mediumship that is really um, interesting. Let me check the questions really, really quick. Uh, sorry, Sister Jessica's connection wasn't that good and there was a big delay on the audio so we'll bring her back on a different show when things are a little bit better um okay so let's see peggy says thinking about a friend of years was stationed in germany woke up thinking of her so i called her mom to get a current address her mom says wait a minute and puts my friend on the phone first time in years she'd come home so you you got you had a premonition about her and was able to connect with her through that feeling uh, on a specific time when she's come home. So that's a really good um, influence there. So Sharon says, I asked for a sign from my dad, ended up following a car with plates that started with dad. That's, that's pretty good. And that's a pretty good sign too. So Eloise wants to know, what if you hear angels singing in your room? Yep, you can't beat that sign. <laughs> Yeah, beat that sign, and that, that can't be misconstrued in any way, for sure. Good to see you here, Eloise, and uh, I'll ask that you go and give the YouTube channel a subscribe and a like and hit the notification bell, and good to see you here on Monday night. Um, <clears throat> hey to Kathy Dalton, and Ina's, Ina says, Catherine, you're echoing on her feed. Yes, yeah, so the echo and the delay was really bad, but we'll fix that next time. Special shout out to my neighbor, Amber Benting. Good to see you. Uh, just looking for up over here on Instagram. Um, so we want to go into one other uh, part of this. And this happens a lot in the mediumship. Um, if um, I get a message from a loved one who has a particular thing they want to say to the client. And the client may feel like, let's try this for the audio, the client may feel like that they have to do uh, what is being told to them, but that's not necessarily true. And this was one of the other things I wanted to go into. Let's say your, uh, let's say your dad um, says, your dad's passed on and he says to you something specific in a reading and you're not really keen on doing that. My thought on this is if you weren't keen, let's say if he was still alive and you, you wouldn't have done it. Let's say he wanted you to do something and, and you would not be keen on that, even if he was alive and you would say no. It doesn't change any after death just because they've lost the body doesn't mean there's any divine knowledge or command that you have to do something just because it comes from the beyond take that message and think if you wouldn't have done it in life it doesn't change just because they've lost their body okay so don't feel like you have you know if you're given a message that you have to do it that's not not the way that works you know they can suggest from their angle all they want but uh, that does not mean that you have to do it. So Patty Ann says, angel in the sky, and her name was in the sky next to the angel, and four newspaper clippings from 1976 blew into my yard with our first names, old TV show listing that I was currently watching, etc. There is so much more. And that's a perfect example, Patty Ann, of 
synchronistic type of things happening simultaneously. I guess that's what I want to mainly get at is <clears throat> there has to be some kind of synchronistic element to a sign being, you know, it's a special day, birthday, anniversaries, you know, specifically you're thinking of them on that day or you've asked for them to send you some kind of sign. Chantel says, one day at 1 a.m., my phone, which was plugged in, kept short circuiting, going biz, biz, nonstop. I unplugged it, turned it off, and it was still doing it. Finally, it stopped. The following morning, I heard my dad had passed at 7 a.m. We are six hours behind France, so I feel my dad called as he passed. Are we able to do that kind of thing fast when he passed? Absolutely. Um, you know, you're made of electromagnetic energy and you're also made of kinetic energy. Dead bodies don't move. And as a living thing, you move. And so there are a lot of things that spirits can do simply because that's part of what makes up your spirit is electromagnetic energy and kinetic force. So that's uh, specifically why spirits can move things is we're already made of kinetic energy. So uh, but we have to know how to manipulate that energy in order to produce a certain type of movement. So I, absolutely, that was probably your dad calling to let you know that he was quite fine. So Deanna says that audio is much better. Yes. Yes. The audio is much better now. <laughs> it's it's uh, better because I plugged that in. <laughs> It's always good if you can remember to plug your microphone in. So Kathy Dalton says, interesting. Yes, it is. But I don't want you to think that, you know, if you get a message from the beyond that you have to do what they say just because it came from, you know, the ether regions, which is not true. You don't have to um, just consider, you know, if that person was living, would you follow that advice? And the, if the answer is no, then just keep it no. <laughs> the other thing is, and I, you know, this, <laughs> this is a soapbox thing of mine. Um, when people are doing um, investigations and they get EVPs and signs and stuff, and let's say they get a bunch of EVPs that says, I'm the devil or I'm Satan. You know, spirits know what to say to freak you out. They know what to say to uh, elicit fear. And so um, some of the things that uh, they can do is just come across with EVPs like that. That doesn't mean that it is, you know, a demon or the devil or say that doesn't mean that. There's so many other things that have to be present in order to even come into that partially into that realm. Um, but they know exactly what to say to elicit fear. So just remember that. So Ina says is thinking about someone you haven't seen in years and then a week or so later hearing they have died a sign or a premonition. And what is the difference if not? Yes, it's a sign and a premonition, but here's the thing about premonitions. And, you know, we, it was last year we talked about uh, what time is um, and time is not linear like we think it is. It's more of a location. And so when you have uh, a dream or a thought and, and you feel like it's a premonition uh, of something that's going to happen in the future, in the timeline, since it's a location, it's already happened. And so what's happening in that moment is you're simply using your subconscious to tap into that location and perceive what's already happened. I hope that answers it OK for you. And I will after the show, I'll go back and get grab the link to that show on time and I'll drop it in the comments, too. So Deanna says, so they don't have a better perspective from the other side. Yes, some do, especially somebody who in life, let's say they were a very wise person, gave a lot of good advice. Um, 
you know, gave you good advice, only wanted the best for you. It, and if if was somebody that you would go to with a problem and you would trust what they say. Um, and let's say they were a very religious or spiritual person. That's definitely somebody that has a better perspective from the other side. Definitely. And uh, Brandy wants to know what is an EVP? EVP stand for electronic voice phenomena. And that is when we're doing investigations or trying to communicate with spirits and we use a, just a plain recording device. You know, you can use the old fashioned tape recorders or you can use a digital recorder and you ask a specific question and then you pause for a long period of time and you wait for some kind of response. And the, and the response is usually a voice that's imprinted onto the recorder that um, will either be very clear or maybe it will be muffled, but you can still kind of tell what the voice is trying to say. And we're always hoping for a direct answer to whatever question we were asking. And sometimes we actually get a direct answer to those questions. Good to see you, Angela Atkins. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it for tonight. That's just a real quick, you know, when signs are really signs, when they're not, you know, you don't have to listen to everything <laughs> that the dead tell you just because, you know, they have passed on, they don't have divine knowledge about everything. And if you wouldn't have listened to them in life, then you don't necessarily have to do that after they have passed on, you know, um, but some people who've passed on do gain a lot of knowledge with that passing, but it's usually somebody who you respected and would have followed their advice in life anyway. So sorry about the audio glitch tonight. We'll try again with sister Jessica. And uh, I really want to do maybe a show on um, uh, what, you know, how evil manifests in the world today and that kind of thing. Um, and and we'll hit that. And next time, I think, uh, let's do a dream show because the dreams are piling up here. And if you have a dream that you need interpreted, go ahead and message me. I'll drop my email in the box here the comment box and uh, go ahead and email me your dream and I will present it anonymously on the show for you. Let's see. Uh, let's one last comment or a couple last comments. So Joshua says before my mother passed away, I had a dream that I took her to the doctor and she died on the exam table. I was so scared afterwards to take her to any appointments. I betcha. Fast forward. A few months, I took her to a doctor's appointment where she was sent to the hospital and died within four hours. Friends remember me telling about that dream. Yes, you probably tapped into um, the timeline and that location with your dream. And uh, yeah, so, but, you know, you couldn't have done anything any different. Uh, and the fact that you tapped into the timeline on that location means that you couldn't have done anything any different. So you're good. So Amber says, but they can trick you as well. And it makes it hard when you haven't connected with your past loved ones. And in longing for that relationship, you can go along with what is asked, but it can also not at not all the time be your guardian causing turmoil. Yes. That's why it is important to always do, like if you're going to do any kind of communication, you need to do your prayer work before and after and make sure that you are spiritually protected when you're trying to communicate. Always, always, always. All right, you guys, I will see you next week. Again, send me your dreams and we'll get some of these dreams done. Kisses from Kentucky. I hope you guys have a fabulous week. Stay cool. Bye.